Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Ruben. And in this video, we're going to be looking at creating your own functions. So far, we've been able to create programs that use uh, procedures uh, as a list of tasks that sort of perform an action. We have variables that we can store values in. Uh, we also should have looked at how to pass values to procedures so that we can create a procedure and we pass values using parameters. And this has given us a, a range of things that we can actually do where we have a task we want to perform. Yeah, and you know, procedures have been useful for performing certain tasks for us, like you said, but you know, I, I want a way where I can create like a certain artifact that can calculate a value for us, like a meaningful value, and we can use that within our programs. Yeah, well, this is a case where we can use functions. Functions are a way for us to encapsulate, so capture all of the steps that we need to perform uh, in order to calculate a value. They're very, very similar to procedures, and the code looks very similar, but it has one major difference. A procedure does a task, and so it performs that task, whereas a function should be used to calculate a value. Okay, well, I think what we've got there, I can perhaps apply that to my little program here. Uh, because I've got all these different mathematical expressions in, in main, but you know they don't really belong there. I, I want to be able to put them, isolate them in their own artifact, and every time I call that, it, it just it just returns the value that I need it to. Yeah. So, well, what does the program actually do? Okay. So this program is a body fat calculator. Okay? That sounds good. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm in touch with my weight and um, just needed something to uh, represent that. So. Yep. All right. So at the moment. I can see you've, you've declared a number of constants. Yeah. So this is something we should also talk about. So constants uh, are a great way of making values more meaningful and values that are not going to change. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's why I've got these here because these, I need these two values to perform uh, the mathematics required for me to, to calculate my body fat percentage. Yeah. So the, the different constants, you can think about them just like variables, but the, the main difference is a constant's value doesn't change throughout the execution of the program. So, yeah. for example, in this, we're never going to change the ratio of you know converting kilograms into pound. Yeah, so that's that's exactly right. Um, basically, we've got the user, they need to input these values, you know, their weight in kilograms and their waist measurement in centimetres, but the program that I've developed is based on a system that the, the US Navy came up with to calculate people's body fat percentage. So... I need a meaningful way to be able to convert someone's weight in kilograms to pounds and you know centimeters to inches and that, that's why I've got these constants and they're more meaningful than just you know writing 2.205 anywhere in the code I, I, I want to be able to you know see exactly what that value is so in this instance it's kilograms to pounds yeah and the other one is centimeters to inches which is 0 0.394 yep cool all right, so I can also see down in main, we're reading in the values for the user's uh, weight and waist measurement, and then I'm assuming these next bunch of code here is is the code that calculates the, the body fat percentage. Yeah, so that's the code that will calculate the body fat percentage, and um, it'll do it once, but I want to be able to do it over and over again in my program because you know, I, I, I don't want to have to remember these this, this sequence of instructions every time I want to do this. Yeah, because it's a lot of code you'd have to type in type in each time. Yeah. All right, so what we could do... So uh, does this work for both males and females? Well, the, good thing you bring that uh, up. This, this, is just, <laughs> this is just for males, okay? okay. So um, that, that, that's a good idea. Perhaps I want something to be able to calculate body fat percentage for males and something else that works for females. Yeah, okay. All right, well, what we could do is move this all move all the calculation code up into our own function. Okay. And so that function, we would need to give it parameters. So what the two values the users enter is, is going to be their, their total body weight and their, their waist measurement. Yeah, yep. And everything else you can calculate off that. That's yeah, right? that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, so those two things can become our parameters. Yep. So that's sort of going back to that the video on that we've talked about parameters. So this would enable you to pass in those two values into this function. Yeah. And that's the only information the function will need to calculate yeah. that value for us. That's right. And it can then create its own local variables in order to calculate all of the sort of the values you're, you're using along the way to work out the final you know, result of the function. Yeah, okay. And this is, this is just like a procedure. I can 
I can call this as many times as I want in yeah. my program, but the yeah. difference is this will calculate a value for me yeah. and return it. Yeah, so what we've got, if you have, have a look at the code here, uh, we can see the, the return type. Yeah. So this indicates that this function is going to return a double value. Okay. Whereas a procedure says that it returns nothing. Yeah, yeah. It, it just does stuff and then it finishes. Yep. A function performs the steps, so it still does... It's, I mean, if you look at it, it looks just like a procedure. Yeah, yeah. The only difference is that at the end, we return a value. And this here determines the type of value. And down the bottom here, this is how we indicate what value we want to actually return from the function. Okay. And in this instance, the value that it returns is, re is stored in result. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And then the result is returned. And so that is the value that sort of comes back when the function finishes. Cool. So... Down here in main now, I've, I've got this variable called fat percentage, or fat percent rather, and I can just assign the value returned by our function male body fat percent to that variable. Yeah, that's right. So we call this, what happens down here, we call that function, it comes up, executes those instructions, passing those two values across to the two parameters. Yep. And then at the end of the function, we get the result, and the result is returned. And so this function called down here effectively gets that value or becomes that value and then that value can be assigned into the fat percent we can print that out yeah that's that's really neat and what's really cool now is you can also just uh, call that function again and so this time we could pass in some extra values so say you know 74.4 kilos with a 83.4 uh, centimeter waist yeah and then that function would calculate the male body fat percentage for for that that person, and that would be stored into fat percent. Yep. And we can print that out. And so you notice that that's much easier than having to type in all of that. We'll repeat yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. And I think what you'll find even cooler, if notice we're only really using the fat percent just to output the value. Yeah. What we could actually do, rather than uh, storing the value in the variable and then using the variable, you can just use the result of the function inside another expression so down here where we're printing out the value we can just call the function and whatever value is returned we can just say we'll just you know print that out we multiply it by 100 etc yeah uh, and then print that value out uh, so you don't have to always store the values in variables if you don't need the variable for some other use so what you're saying is that will do the same thing as assigning that value to a variable and then printing that, that variable. variable out yeah the only thing is at the end of this line here, you can't get back to that value. Yeah. You used it and it's gone. Yep. Uh, whereas if I stored it in a variable, I could then just use the variable uh, over and over again. Cool. Uh, so you have to think about that. If you only want to use it once, then you don't need to store it in a variable. Just use it wherever you want to use it. Uh, otherwise, store it in a variable and then use it multiple times. Yeah. Uh, so one thing you'd want to avoid would be, say, if I wanted to you know, use the the male body fat percent of the person with 82 uh, kilograms, 101.4 yeah. centimeter waist, uh, then uh, if I call that function again, it has to go back up here and recalculate the value. So if yeah. I did want to use it more than once, definitely save it in a variable. Yep. Only using it once, you can skip that step. Cool. All right, Ruben, did you want to run through how this works? Maybe we'll just go through the first uh, calculation of the body fat percent in detail, and then the other ones will just sort of... The steps are the same, we'll, we'll, but we'll just skip over them a bit more quickly. Sure. So the first thing that happens when the program is executed is we go down to main and we've got these variable declarations here. Now the first two are weight and waist measurement and they're doubles. Uh, and fat percent, which is also a double. Yeah, so we've allocated space for three variables, all that can store whole uh, real numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so our the first thing that happens in the program is we assign a value to our weight variable and we do that by calling read double. So what and now what do you think read double is? Well now that you've told me about functions I, I'm almost certain that read double is in fact a function. That's correct so read double is just a function that somebody else has written yeah in this case us uh, and that function takes in one parameter which is the prompt yep. the message we're going to show the user it then reads whatever I type at the keyboard mm -hmm. and that value when it comes back is assigned to that variable. Yeah. So that we've been using functions already. This is just, now we can also create our own. Yeah, cool. So in this instance, um, let's uh, 
you know, assign the value 90.2 to yep. our uh, weight variable. Yep, so 90.2 comes back from the function. Yep. We store it in the weight. Yep. Now, our next uh, instruction is to assign a value to our waste measurement variable. So the same thing happens again. So it's using the read double function. Yep. Let's assume the user returns or types in 86.5. That'll be good. And that value is then returned by that function and stored in the waste measurement variable. Yep, by the assignment statement. Yep. Uh, so now we get up to our magical part. Yeah? This, this <laughs> is it. So this is where we get to use the function that we've created. Uh, we're going to call male body fat percent and we're going to pass those two uh, values in from our variables weight and waist measurement as parameters. Yeah, so weight will be passed up and it will go into the total body weight yep. parameter in the male body fat percent function. Mm -hmm. And then waist measurement will also be passed up into the waist parameter in the male body fat uh, percent function. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that function's been called. Uh, we've got some variables here that are declared. So, yeah, so it's going to appear on top on, on the stack. So yes. So that when this finishes, it knows where to go back to. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yep. Uh, we've got these different variables here. Uh, factor 1, factor 2, lean body mass, body fat, weight, and weight in pounds. Yep. Uh, we need all those different variables for our calculations. Yep, so they're all allocated space. Yep. Um, okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we're going to calculate uh, total body weight uh, multiplied by our constant value of kilograms to pounds. Yeah, so this is going, so this, when we use the constant, it's just like using a variable that's actually just going to be replaced with the value 2.205. Yeah. Uh, and so effectively what you're doing here is converting the user's weight in kilograms into pounds. Yep. So you can use that through the rest of the code there. Yeah. And that expression is 90.2 multiplied by 2.205. Uh, which is equal to 198.891. <laughs> cool. <laughs> we, and that gets stored in our weight in pounds. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, our, our next expression is we've got weight in pounds, so the value that we just calculated. We've got to multiply that by 1.082 uh, plus 94.42. Okay. So the result of that, 309.62, Sounds pretty which good. is stored in... Factor one. Yeah. Now, the, in this case here, we do have two magic numbers, 1.082 and 94.42. Mm -hmm. uh, these just come from the that US Navy yeah, yeah. formula. They don't get any, any reasoning or rationale, so we yeah. can't really come up with meaningful names for those values. Mm -hmm. um, so we, you'd have to think about whether we could come up with something, but in this case, we'll just leave them as values. Yeah. So that, that value get, uh, gets assigned to uh, factor one. So we calculate factor two, same sort of way. Yep. So waist times this kind, we, we're converting it centimetres to inches. Yep. And they've got their magical factor of, well, it is magical, isn't it? We have <laughs> no bloody idea why it's 4.15, but it that's what is. it is. Yeah. Uh, so we multiply by that, that by 4.15. So that gives us a total of... 141.436. Yep, which we store in factor two. Yeah. So when we calculate the lean body mass, that ends up being... 168.184. Yep. Yep. Uh, and that gives us a total body fat of, what is that, 198.891 minus... 168.184, so, which is 30.707. Yeah, and that is stored in our uh, body fat. Yep. And now we're up to our body fat percentage result calculation. Yep. Which so, is body fat weight divided by weight in pounds. So 30.707 divided by 198.891. Yep, which, which is, is 0 0.1544. Yep, and that is stored in the, the result, result variable. Yep. yep. So at the end of the function, what happens? Uh, the function returns that value. It, yep. re it returns our result. Yeah, so it returns the result, yep. uh, which is 0 0.144. So we, what happens 0. now? 0.1544. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's okay. So we come back down here to main now, and this function call here has now become the value 0. 0.1544. Yep. So that's what we mean by return. We mean that the function ends, and where it was called from becomes that value. Okay. And so this is now 0. 0.1544, and so we can then just store that in yeah, fat percent variable. Yeah, so when we print it out, we get 15.44%. Yeah.
Yeah. Seems quite reasonable. Yeah, it does. That's, yeah. that's a healthy individual. So we then call the function again, and this time, those two, we just get literal values passed across. So yes. 74.4 gets passed into total body weight, mm -hmm. and 83.4 gets passed into waste. Yeah. Uh, and we then go through those same steps. Yep. And it calculates, so we calculate the weight in pounds, factor one, factor two, et cetera. Yeah. And at the end, we get our result, which is... In this case, it's 0 0.1737. Yeah, and that gets stored. Into fat percent. Yeah, so that's the result that's returned yep. becomes that value, and we store that in that fat percent. Yeah. Uh, we can print that out. And the same thing happens down in the bottom here. So when we call uh, the male body fat percent with 82 and 101.4, yeah. Uh, that function gets executed, it runs all of the steps, at the end it returns the value, and then it's just like you typed uh, 0.3128. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that value there, 31.28%, when we multiply it by 100, that is, yeah. uh, would be printed out. Cool. And that pretty much wraps up the execution of that program. Yeah. So here are some other examples. Uh, as I said before, we needed a, another function to calculate female body fat percent because yeah. that one that we just demonstrated was, was for males only. And so this is the, that function. takes in a few extra parameters, has a few extra steps, but the same sort of idea. You call yeah. the function, pass in the values, it does its magic, yep. and it comes back with a result. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got another one here to calculate the area of a circle. So we're using another constant here. So we cr create a constant for pi. Yeah. Uh, and we would have uh, pi multiplied by the radius. It's, it's a lot simpler function, yeah, yeah. but would make it easier if you had to calculate circle areas yeah. a, a number of times. And uh, the, the final example here is um, squaring a number. And basically, you pass it a number as a parameter, and it will square that number for you and return the result. So you know, if you yeah. passed in two, it would return four. Yeah, and yeah. so these are just these other ones are, are slightly simpler functions. All right, that's it for functions. Functions, just like procedures, but they're used to calculate a value. So this is really useful if you have a bunch of steps or some sort of calculation you need to perform and you want to get a result back, like a number. It doesn't have to be a number. It could be, so it could be, we did doubles in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be returning a string, such as read string. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or integer, read integer, et cetera. Yep. We've also got some videos on parameters and procedures as well as variables. Yeah, so if you haven't checked those ones out, go back and have a look at those ones now. They're, they should sort of complement this one. Yeah, and coming up, we're going to be introducing you to control flow, which gives you the ability to introduce much more dynamic behavior in your programs. Yeah. All right, that's it for functions. Hope you've enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. This has been a Spindle Introduction.